My name is Trishana, and I am a online store owner. It's called JohnRevain.com. Um, you can shop by Bohemian, shop by just different cultures and genres of fashion that you can shop by, and that's what brought me here. I go by Jocasta Rex, and I do a little bit of everything. I could say I'm a jack of all trades. So um, I do art, I do music. I'm a classical cellist. I've been playing for 12 years. Um, I model a little bit. The clothes that we did today and that I have on, I um, designed with my business partner, Trishana. Um, I also do design clothing and we'll have my own clothing brand coming out, which I'm really excited about. And I host events, which is what all this is about, um, the Feed the Beast. I guess Creative Expo is what we're kind of calling it, which will be May 2nd. Um, and that's just kind of a little rundown of me and everything that I do and what I go by. Uh, the Jocasta Rex part, um, my name is from the story behind the Oedipus Complex. And my dad was an English major in college and he just has a very funny sense of humor. And my actual, the, I would guess, I would say like the first man I fell in love with next to Bob Marley would be Malcolm X. And for a really long time, I actually went by Jocasta X, um, like on social media and stuff like that. But then with the story behind my name, I switched it to Rex and it just kind of has stuck for the last couple of years. And I love it. Everybody else who calls me by that or recognizes me by that, it makes me feel more myself, especially because I'm from a biracial family. So that whole like finding your identity and figuring out who you are is a huge part in that. So have kind of changing my last name. I don't go by my biological last names. Um, it gives me that chance to just be myself. So that's just kind of me. I don't know. <laughs>I did an event with Joanna LaFleur, it would be coming on two years ago now, called Fashion is Art, where um, she had a lot of local designers do a fashion show, and my band that I'm in with, my boyfriend Rodney, called Dream House, we performed in the intermission. And it was coming up to be about a year after that event, and we contacted Joanna to see if there was going to be another one. And the way that the events with the company that she works with were working, there wasn't going to be one. And I looked at Rodney and just kind of with everything that was going on in the world and how discouraged I was feeling as an artist and as like a creative person, I felt like we needed to have something that we could express ourselves and an, an avenue for people um, to just kind of get their work out there and get their craft out there and just kind of give them that next step to get their art sold or to get their designs out there for models to get that experience that they needed. And... Um, I had gone to the Raw Omaha events, and I really liked the idea, I really liked the concept of the art being there, the models being there, the musicians being there. Um, but to get a lot of the people that I love and work with on a daily basis there, it was going to be really hard. So talking to Rodney, we just decided that we were going to do our own event and um, put our own little personal twist on it and give it a little bit more of a love status like a, a, a love aspect and just like a family aspect so a lot of the people that are going to be in and part of the event are people that I hold close to me like a lot of my friends are really um, close on the team with me and help me creatively with everything um, so then I brought Trishana on because I had talked to her about modeling for her which went really really well and from then on it's been about six months now that we've been working with each other getting everything lined up for the event and um getting people on our team and just getting those right people with those right talents to push the event forward and to make it happen. My role with Feed the Beast is a 50% partnership with Jocasta Rex, who also, she does art, she's amazing. Um, but basically, we just are working to build this big foundation to get designers and artists and entrepreneurs involved in such a great space to kind of network and socialize with other like-minded people and just grow their businesses. So basically, Jocasta seen my work with my own um, my own brand, basically, and liked the clothes. And we kind of met through Rodney, who had the sneaker expo. And basically, we just kind of liked each other from there. Her vibe was great. My vibe was great towards her. And then um, I got a call. I was talking to Rodney about doing something like this. And then I got a call from Rodney and Jocasta about putting together a fashion show. So we just had our first meeting, kind of hit it off from there. And then our smaller goal turned into like this big dream and it's like happening so yay 
for us. So, oh, um, I would say that that's pretty much exactly how we met. We, uh, I was actually really nervous to talk to her the first time. We were at the Sneaker Expo, and Rodney had shown me her Instagram and her clothing and stuff. I was really excited. And he literally pushed me forward <laughs> into her to um, introduce myself and to talk. And, yeah, our first meeting was, like, really nerve-wracking because we both um, are super introverts and super to ourselves and don't really talk to people a lot. And so when we first went into our meeting, we were very nervous and um, – I know I was. I was, like, shaking and just, like, stammering over myself. But um, after that, our relationship kind of just took off from there. And we've had our ups and downs, as all, like, business partners do. But we've become better as friends, I think, through the whole entire situation. So that makes it a lot easier, and the trust is there for us to build this dream. And it did. It started off as just, like, a little tiny event. And now we're thinking, like, 10 years down the road, 15 years down the road of how we want this to – <laughs> go forward and and how we want our our dream to actually happen so I like her she's cool I like her <laughs> crazy my great grandmother got me into this line of work when I was like four she used to make me draw and my mom used to make me go in bead classes who even knew they had that but I used to make jewelry, and I used to draw, and I won art awards at like four or five years old. And ever since then, I just knew I wanted to be creative. Actually, I was like six years old in a sewing class with nothing but adults. You had to be 18 or older, and I was six years old, cried every day. But that's how I learned how to sew, and that brought me here. That made me who I am. What makes me hungry I would have to say seeing others starve. That makes me hungry. I don't want to see other people starving or people feel like they don't have anything or they're stuck or they can't be something. I don't like to see people being less fortunate and that makes me hungry to do something to change the situation. What makes me hungry the most and is in like hungry for my passion and for my art and for my music would have to be just seeing the other artists that are my age and even younger than me, like my younger siblings, just seeing them struggle with their identity and struggle with who they are and being who they are. And a lot of my art is a lot about, like me personally, if people ask me like what the background story behind my art has a lot to do with like personal identity and understanding who you are as a person and being able to express that and your love for nature and your love for what goes on in the world. Um, so I'd have to say that that's probably the thing that makes me the most hungry. Uh, just like watching the news every day and seeing the things that go on and having that just frustration is being a creative person. There's not a lot of avenues for you to be able to say, I did this and this changed the world or I did this and this put an impact on people. Like when it comes to art and stuff like that, it's really subtle when it comes to changing people's lives. And a lot of people don't understand that a lot of artists that are out there and a lot of musicians that are out there, like they do save people's lives. Like there's people out there that make such a huge impact on people. And just like that aspect, because I know me personally, I've gone through a lot of like, not necessarily like a lot of like self-hatred and a lot of just like issues with myself. And so having those artists to be able to look up to really made me want to do that for other people and to be that like outlet and to tell people like they're not alone and, and that type of thing. So that's just kind of the thing. I, I would say like me as a younger person and who I was like in middle school, it's probably the thing that makes me the most hungry, just knowing the things that I struggled with and knowing that there's other people out there that struggle with them and being able to say like I helped with that or I tried, I put my mark on the world to be able to, to push younger people forward in their dreams. I want everybody there. I want grandmas. I want babies. I want crazy aunts. I want people bring their cats. I don't care. Just everybody. <laughs> I want everybody. Because that'll just give it that family. Like, I'm not even, like, a whole, like, I want more black people around, more white people. I want more Mexican people. Like, I think that's what's going to make this event so much different and so just unique to, to Oma is the fact that I'm marketing to everyone. Like, I'm going to every single side of the city and saying, hey, I really like your vision. Or, hey, your art, I see your passion. I see your love. Come, come do this. Come be a part of, of my family. Come join. And just that aspect, I think, and having everybody. I just want... You know, just everybody, like a little family, can have a cookout, you know, just hang out, tell stories around a campfire. I mean, that's just kind of like who I feel like. Everybody. And people who aren't there, like, you're really lame. 
Like, you're for real. Like, you have some issues if you're not there because it's probably going to be the coolest thing that ever happened to you in your entire life. And if you're not there, like, you're missing out. You're going to feel it in your heart. Like, you're going to be there the, the day after the event. You're going to be like, oh, my gosh, something happened. Something changed the world, and I wasn't there. I'm missing out. <laughs> so I think, I think everybody should be there. I would like to see you at the event, everyone at this event. I feel like if you are creative, if you're not creative, if you want to be nosy, if you don't like us, come. Bring your family, bring your cats, your dogs, your uncles, your cats. Just come. Fellowship with us. Ha, I sound like a church. Um, but just come and then just um, invite people. You may, you may find that you like something that you never even knew that you had an interest for because we're just that creative and we can snatch you in and make you become one of us. <laughs>We are wanting to accomplish, and I know we will accomplish from this event. Basically, it's bigger than our egos. It's bigger than anything that we're thinking of. It's, we want artists, we want designers, we want dancers, entrepreneurs to be able to come together, have a platform to work, to be able to bounce ideas off of each other. We want to take this thing to another level, do it maybe twice a year, travel with it. And it's bigger, like she said, so it's not always easy working with people, especially when you start off working by yourself. But we want this event to grow and we want to be able to extend it and reach out to so many different people. And it's bigger than our egos, it's bigger than anyone. So that's what we really want to just build awareness to our own, our own brands as well as other brands and make it happen. You're young, keep it going. That's what we really want to do. So. There's going to be um, art tables first, so make sure you stick around and check out all of our amazing artists and entrepreneurs, as well as make sure you stay for the show. Some people just want to get up and go, but please don't because we have so much more for you. Watch the tables, check out some poetry, make sure you stay during the actual show, and then make sure you stay a little bit after, kind of catch those numbers, and, and hopefully to exchange some numbers with other people so that way you can start growing your own business and just kind of prospering from there. So make sure you don't just get up and go after you see an artist or a designer. Keep your butt in that seat. my advice that I would give and that I have given to people would just be to not even necessarily to be yourself or to find yourself because that's also like a lifelong journey that I, that you go through as a human but just to like enjoy and experience and and not to hold yourself back from things and not to be like you're gonna be scared to do things that are like weird like my face right now like if you know me I don't ever wear makeup like this like ever in my entire life like I don't Pluck my eyebrows, I'm doing nothing. And so, like, doing this makeup is taking a step out of my comfort zone. And, and I'm, I'm getting used to it. These eyelashes are a little long, but it's okay. I'm, I like it, and I like that, the feeling of just going out there. So I'd say just don't, don't be afraid to, to try new things. And you never really know what's you or what's not you until you try it. And you'll be surprised about what it is that is really not you or what's really you. Man. No, I'm just like... <laughs> Um, advice for younger people, because we are only we were only 20 when this happened, 19, even when we met. And just to be a young go-getter, if there's someone who tells you you cannot do it, if there's something blocking you, negative energy, put that to the back and ride off your positive energy in the front. If there's something you want to do, do it. If there's no one supporting you, as long as you have yourself, do it. Don't make plan Bs and Cs because that's planning to fail. Plan to win, plan A, number one, go for it. That's it. Do it. really bad at social media because I don't like pictures of my face and I don't take a lot of pictures of my art which I probably should change um, but I'm on Instagram under Jocasta Rex my Facebook is under my biological name but if you just search Jocasta it's J-A-C-A-S-T-A -A -A, capital J and capital C um, you'll find me okay so check out johnravain.com shop for your girlfriend shop for your mother johnravain.com G-E-N R-E-V-A-E-I-N.com, JohnRevain.com. Also, John Ravain on Instagram, and I'm Trishana, so check me out on Instagram as well at T-R-I-S-H-O-N-N-A. Check me out. Feed me. Feed me. I am beast. Huh.
feed the beast. 